Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois. She's a member of the Armed Services Committee, the Committee on Foreign Relations, and an Iraq War veteran. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us first on this solemn day. And as someone who has personally been wounded and has lost friends in battle, I want to get your thoughts about what we're about to witness as these fallen soldiers return home. Well, you're going to see a terrible beauty. It's how I've always uh, described these moments, whether it is the dignified transfer or um, a ceremony at Arlington Cemetery. I'm heartbroken for the three service members, um, uh, Sergeants River, Sanders, and Moffat, as well as their families. Um, but you're gonna see them brought home uh, to their loved ones so that they can be laid to rest uh, and, and be receiving of the thanks of our grateful nation for their service and sacrifice. The U.S. believes an umbrella group of Iranian-backed militias known as the Islamic Resistance in Iraq is responsible for their death. So let's talk about the response. You have said the message we send to Iran must make war less likely, not more. So what would that look like? What kind of response? I think we need to have a very strong response and we need to target these groups. Um, uh, Iran has uh, been reckless in its funding over years and decades now of all of these Iranian proxy groups all over the Middle East, and they're wrecking havoc everywhere. And in fact, they've lost control of these groups. Uh, 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 and I think they were quite surprised by this attack themselves. So I think we need to have a very strong response. We need to go after the groups. If we can identify which ones in particular were responsible for these attacks, we need to retaliate. Uh, uh, but I also caution that in our retaliation, we don't bring ourselves to the cost of uh, spiraling into to another war in the Middle East. That is not something that we want as a nation. Uh, uh, and certainly we would not want to be putting more troops in harm's way by starting us on a path towards war. But is it a fine line? I know you've been critical of your Republican colleagues who have called for striking Iran directly. Iran has warned it would hit back, but what do you think Iran would do? Well, I can't tell you what Iran would do. Uh, I think that uh, it depends on the type of attack that we mount. I, initial reports suggest that, uh, that what the president is planning is well thought out, uh, that it is going to be a strong response aimed at deterring Iran from supporting further attacks on U.S. troops without risking that escalation that I'm, that I'm worried about that could lead us into yet another war in the Middle East. Uh, what we need to not do is uh, start us on the path towards war now. Uh, I do think we need to go after these terrorists, and, and as we have done with the Hamas uh, uh, fighters, as we have done uh, uh, with uh, retaliatory strikes on other groups, uh, I think that that's what the president should do. Um, but again, we have to be very careful how we as how we respond, and so that we are not in danger of escalating to a full-blown war. The U.S. has already been conducting some targeted strikes, in particular against the Houthis in Yemen, and it has not deterred them. These groups largely seem emboldened. So why haven't they been deterred? Well, some of them have. As you uh, mentioned earlier, uh, there is a mixed response from them. I think we continue to need to uh, report, uh, re retaliate in a very strong way. We need to take some of these groups out. Uh, but remember that the responsibility for this lies with Iran. Iran itself, from reports that I've seen, were surprised by some of these attacks. Uh, recently, I believe the, um, one of the groups used ballistic missiles, for example, that Iran uh, uh, indicated that Iran was surprised that they used ballistic missiles. Um, so we need to continue to strike back, uh, but we need to do this in a very strong way to send that message to Iran to get control of these proxy groups uh, and make sure that you remain control over them. And let's not uh, escalate towards war by attacking more U.S. service members. Do you have any concern that the Biden administration hasn't responded more forcefully or more swiftly since the deadly attack in Jordan? Well, I don't have concerns with that because I understand that uh, they are planning a very strong series of attacks. And from what I can discuss here, uh, it appears to be a very well thought out uh, surgical way of responding that will be aimed at deterring Iran. The, the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, your fellow Democratic Senator Ben Cardin, says that he believes President Biden should come to Congress for a new authorization for military action. Do you believe the White House should seek congressional approval for additional military action? Where's the line on that? Well, so there is a line that is uh, approximately 90 days from the initial uh, responses. Uh, that will happen sometime, I believe, in March or April. Uh, I do think that if the president does continue to move forward uh, with responses, that there is a need to bring 
uh, an authorization for use of military force to the floor of the Senate. And this is what I say to my Republican colleagues who are calling for us to take it to Tehran. Uh, some of them say, well, if you want to attack Tehran, then let's have that conversation on the floor of the Senate. Let's show you know, a, a tiny percentage of the bravery that our troops are showing uh, uh, in harm's way by having that discussion on the floor of the Senate. And then let's have a vote. You want to attack Iran? Then let's have a vote on the floor of the Senate. And let's have the guts of our convictions and, and have that discussion. And if need be, then vote for it. Uh, but uh, to uh, call for attacks, you know, taking it to Tehran and have the, these very reckless statements, I don't think helps the situation. Um, but there is a process for the president to come forward. He has a, he's in a time period right now that he can continue to retaliate. Uh, um, uh, he's able to do this because American troops were directly attacked. Um, uh, but I'm also going to be calling for the president to come to the United States Senate should this continue further than the 90 days. Senator, before I let you go, I want to get your reaction to the news with Secretary Lloyd Austin, who apologized yesterday over his secrecy, over his cancer diagnosis. What's your reaction to that? And do you have any concerns about his continued leadership? I have grave concerns about this decision that he and those around him made uh, to hide his condition, uh, not just from the American people, but also from his commander in chief. Um, it sends a, a a very bad message to the troops in the ranks. You know, I spent a lot of time working on veterans affairs, and I've been working on veterans issues for a long time now. And one of the things we've been fighting is to tell our troops when you need help for your medical condition, whether it is seen or an unseen wound, uh, you need to ask for help and don't hide it. And to have uh, the very top person at the Department of Defense hide his condition from his own commander in chief is something that is deeply troubling. And I've sent that very strong message uh, to the DOD itself. Um, and so, uh, yes, I am deeply concerned. I hope that this will never happen again. Um, and frankly, uh, we deserved better than these decisions that were made within DOD prior to uh, Secretary Austin going in for his medical treatment. So just yes or no answer, if you will. Do you have confidence in his continued leadership as the Secretary of Defense? I do. I do have co um, continued confidence. As I said, I've had very strong conversations with them, and they've assured me that this will not happen again and okay. that they are reviewing their procedures.